Hello, this is a Beckstein Model A grand piano that's 185 centimeters long, six foot one inches long, and it's uh, being assessed with you to buying it into stock. And so I want to see what kind of work needs doing on the piano, um, whether we need to fully restore the piano or whether we can just recondition it. And we can see cosmetically, um, it's uh, a bit the worse for wear, unfortunately. It's very dull polish here and you can see the name Beckstein's been obviously they they polished around the name and um, ended up with uh, that basically so it uh, definitely needs repolishing there's the original seller of the piano there and music stand a very tasteful style of Beckstein I do like to get hold of these and this is 1908 so it's a good year for for Model A it's just started in 1902 and uh, 1908 is an excellent year for them, really. The case works uh, when, when it's got turned legs and a, a fretted desk like that, sunburst, a lot of people call that, is um, really beautiful. Going around the side of the piano, well, it's the same story, really. It definitely needs repolishing. You can see a patch here. Uh, there's no way that we're going to be able to to really do sell this piano without repolishing it completely. Or We can't even make it good, I don't think. And there's the long side of the piano. That, that's tremendous. Uh, that's actually not dirt. I think it was, that was literally worn off uh, the finish on the, on the piano. And down the side there, the top here, very, very worn off. So let's just fold it back down and see what we can discover. So the whole of that lid really is obviously being kept closed and the lid's faded and the polish is worn completely off. So it needs repolishing. Now we can actually do traditional French polishing that actually costs more than the modern polyester shiny black finish and French polishing never looks completely perfect in the sense that you'll still see lines in the in uh, even if it's polished out as beautifully as possible whereas polyester is perfect but it can be done normally if we're doing it as a stock piano we wouldn't do that but if we have a client's piano we have done re one recently where we French polished it and I can understand why you, you'd want that done but um, as I say, the polyester is, is totally perfect and it's the common finish on, on all modern pianos really, for if it's black that is. So looking at the inside of the piano, this is in quite good condition actually. Um, it's obviously been restored at some stage. The soundboard here, can't see any cracks on the soundboard. Uh, can't see any evidence of, of them having been repaired either, so it all looks original. Uh, that's just a soundboard in good condition. But the, the strings have been replaced and the tuning pins, as we'll see in a minute. The frame itself, I think, this is the problem really, is Beckstein tends to go very mottled like this. And so, again, it's a cosmetic thing. So if we're going to re-polish the piano, we'd very much lean towards re-restoring the whole of the inside. Beckstein Model A, by the way, is 85 keys, not 88 keys. So it finishes at um, A rather than C. So you're missing the top three keys there, which is fine for, as we've said many times before on videos, for learning the piano, you can pass all, take all your exams without those top three keys. Just zeroing in here on the only chip, and I'm pretty sure we can disguise that, uh, because the rest of the ivories are practically perfect, and it's a shame to lose a set of ivory keys. So. That's good news. Now the piano has been restrung. We know that for the size of the tuning pins, because uh, as we've seen on other videos, the originals are very small, and these are medium-sized tuning pins. And and the rest blank hasn't been changed. That's the wood under there. If you change the rest blank, you can put smaller tuning pins in, obviously. But if you change the uh, strings, you need to put larger pins in. If you don't do that, so they're tight there, and. Uh, pretty tight here too. They will be slightly tighter if we replace the rest blank, but it, they're certainly tight enough. They're not moving when I'm putting a lot of pressure on. And the piano is staying in tune. Let's have a listen to the piano. Lovely rich bass sound, but very weak round here. Surprisingly weak. We'll see why in a minute, because it's not the strings that are making it weak. By the way, the felts are not moth-eaten, they're very good. Um, should, should be Beckstein blue here for that age of piano. Um, so that's totally correct. 
Another thing we've looked out for is whether there's any frame cracks. If you Google Beckstein frame crack, uh, you'll see on Model A particularly, frame cracks are very, very common here. And sometimes they, they go to halfway or beyond halfway. It doesn't really affect the piano at all and affect the tuning or anything. But there's no frame cracks. That's just a scratch, by the way. But there's no frame. The frame crack would appear here. They always do. And then probably 40, 50% of Model A of this age. So it's extremely common and good news that we haven't got any here. Before we look at the action, just want to show you that one important test is, has it lost its down bearing? In other words, does the sound really carry at this point? And it does, that's beautiful, that's just as it should be. Not as beautiful as it should be as because <coughs> the hammers are um, problematic as we'll hear in a minute. So that's usually the weakest point in terms of losing down bearing. And there's not much difference between that note and that note. So that's encouraging. And it has a strong tone right to the top too. So there's lots of positive things to say here. And I could certainly fully restore it without having to recap the bridges really, because you don't need to recap the bridges if the down bearing is not lost. And by the way, the pedals don't show the right hand pedal the same many times before. You can see how much piano has been used by how much more worn that is than the left, because the right hand one gets used a lot more. Although there's a very slight difference here as you touch them. And it has been played a lot, as we'll see in a minute. But because these are very low pedals, and we said the advantage of that is that your feet are not too far off the ground. And also that means if you're tall, you can raise up the casters by an inch and the pedals won't be too high. Now looking at the action, by the way, it doesn't have a tied action, which Model B, uh, even later Model Bs can have tied actions at this, this period of time too, surprisingly. Um, but this is a normal action. If you want to see what we mean by tied action, I think if you, if you look on our website, we've got examples of the difference between normal capstan action here and tied action, and we change it to these normally if we fully restore. Um, by the way, the regulation is not good if you press the hammers down bef without them playing them then they, they're setting off about 10 or 11 millimeters from the string doesn't doesn't look like that on the video but i can assure you it is 10 or 11 millimeters from the string. that was b and c this is c and d and really that's could we get a lot closer now that's regulated by turning these um so they, they need to go in this direction that's um clockwise if you look at it from the top sorry anti-clockwise from the top um so so that they're further up and then it sets off later um another other regulation he's doing too so before doing that the hammer height is uh, about 50 or 51 millimeters should be 47 normally um so that's quite a lot further partly but it's been played obviously and as it's played it it goes it uh, does tend to go down and these need need replacing these are what are called the rollers and those for the hammers so hammers shanks and rollers as we normally say need changing these pins are slightly gone getting on the loose side so if changing hammers shanks and rollers will put all that to rights now we do need to change the hammers because they are extremely flat so they're being worn but um i don't think it's it's a huge, huge amount of playing, as we've seen with the pedal, although that wouldn't indicate because it's quite low anyway. But this huge area that's hitting the string make it very, sound very dull, not bringing the harmonics out. And look at how soft it is. And now it's that reason it's actually worn faster, so it's the felt wasn't really compact. Um, when you put a hammer on, it should be compact, and you voice, voice it down here and then gradually voice it less and less up here. Um, so they weren't hard hammers in the first place. And we can really very clearly see that in this uh, tenor top base area here. Look, look, as I put my nail in, you can actually see the marks. It's very, very loose. I can actually push the top of the hammer over. And that's why the strings aren't sounding as they should do. It's the poor hammer felt, really. So no, no doubt about it. And also look at the large area now hitting the string. That's making it sound dull as well. So um, any new hammers, there's no way around that. You couldn't just reface these. If you watch, again, it's one of the most extreme cases I've had of, I've seen of um, very, very weak felt, very soft. And so the soft tone produces very podgy 
sound. So that's a Bechstein Model A Grand Piano made in 1909, uh, six foot one inches long. And uh, just assessing it with, with the views of whether we can buy the piano. And it certainly needs definitely a lot of work to it. So the worst aspects of the casework, uh, from a technical point of view, the hammers really need changing. There's no way around that one. If you listen to the sound there, it's very, very, it's softer, it's just not clear. And up here it's losing, not clear either. It just needs some um, new felt. I've got the potential of the underlying tone of the backstone. The strings aren't too bad and the tuning pins are reasonably tight. I'm leaning very much towards fully restoring the piano, I think. Because there are aspects of it that are all right. We certainly have to change the hammers and we've got to repolish the case. So once we get that, um, the black piano, uh, if it was a rosewood piano, then we might perhaps start thinking about, well, we can change the hammers and keep and tidy up the case a bit. If it, but this is so far gone that we've got no choice really. It's got good ivory keys, which is nice. So Model A Grand Piano, wonderfully made Grand Piano. So it will be an excellent project, whether we do, and I'm pretty sure we will fully restore this piano. So look back in about four months, five months, when it's fully restored and it'll be in stock as a fully restored Beckstein. See how how weak it is there. Thank you very much for listening.